When I was doing my independent research in aquaculture about intensive tilapia farming, it really opened my mind to really explore and learn a lot of things. My ignorance is my best teacher. For seven years of putting 100% of my time studying the industry about aquaculture, it covered also marketing, production, product development, and how to be off the grid in search of renewable energy, self-sufficient in quality feeds production in the future of the industry. My intellectual property that concerns about this industry, trade secrets that I learned, gathered my documentation in videos, aside from my journals and personal notes, some model system we tried and worked beyond our expectation and passed Rocky Friends strict and meticulous standard to be used in his production, we were able to formulate some new solutions so valuable in the future to be used once I finally decided to venture in aquaculture or share it to the right people who believe in us for the advancement of the industry. God bless. Rocky Friends is the founder and president of Aqua Farming Tech, founded 1993. Rocky Friends, to whom I collaborated in research and development while doing a feasibility study in aquaculture for my own company, which I did an intensive study and educating myself as an independent researcher from 2001 to 2007. Rocky Friends, a visionary in aquaculture in the 21st century, Decades of dedicated innovation and research to whom we have envisioned that someday the fruit of our labor will be recognized, not for monetary gain, but as a contributors in the advancement of the aquaculture industry. Like Rocky Friends, we are willing to go out of the box. Ideas that are crazy and we are motivated by passion and seeking the truth. Year-round production of red tilapia fingerlings for local growers monthly, an average of 10 grams, the Desert Fisherman Hatchery, the only local company whose objective is production of quality fingerlings and continually do research and development for the benefits of the industry. We had the technology, knowledge, expertise, and competent people to produce year-round of quality fingerlings. The company's vision is to be a team player to achieve the ultimate goal of creating a peaceable operating system for industrialized tilapia farming, which will be the world standard. Tilapia, the piece that can feed the world. The first feeding miracle of Jesus Christ is the miracle of the five loads, loads of bread and the two fish. The live tilapia market. Only local supplier, no outside of states or foreign competitors, short of supply to meet the demand of the market. The demand is weekly, year round, not seasonal. The average weight is one pound, one tilapia, one person. Tilapia growers are concentrated here in Coachella Valley because of geothermal source of water. They can grow tilapia year round and for the past decade, they are supplying weekly the local market. However, the local grower, growers do seasonal spawning ever since. Tilapia farming was introduced here in California. The spawning season starts in February or early spring and ends in August. Most of the tilapia growers followed the pioneers there is a massive production of fingerlings during spawning season and stunt some to be your surplus for the, the rest of the year. The grow out tanks of the farmers are full are in full operation year round. For a small farm, this cannot be that much to fill the loss of the profit. 
Portilapia farmers who expanded their operations are the ones suffering because of the high cost maintaining their operations year-round. High cost of feeds, electric bills, plus price of live tilapia is not stable for the past... Complete video of intensive culture system in aqua farming. The video I created an overview of intensive tilapia farming. This was my concept. This farm do not exist. The video is not endorsing anybody or a product. It is pure for educational purpose. I asked the former president of American Tilapia Association, Mr. Ray DeWandel, for comments, as he was the one of the more knowledgeable people in the aquaculture industry and an authority on the subject 2006. He opined that the appropriate agency for distribution is the American Tilapia Association because it is beneficial to the aquaculture industry. Note, Google search will only endorse the most re relevant and important topic in their first window from 1 to 20, usually. Aquaculture, an overview of intensive tilapia farming in Coachella Valley, Riverside County, California, USA. Researched and written and narrated by Efren Maulino Tejuman. No warranties. The viewers should be well aware that this documentation is just that an overview of tilapia farming in Coachella Valley, California, USA, and the videographer possibly, possibly documented for four years whatever he have observed and seen in the most objective and balanced manner possible. Accordingly, the videographer has had spent a lot of time and effort researching and reading books, magazine, and articles about aquaculture, and the viewers may not rely on any statement in or in, in associated from this documentation as a definite opinion in or any given situation or even to the scope of applicable aqua farming. Neither the videographer nor the distributor make any warranty that any information from this documentation is accurate or appropriate for any specific purpose or use. Any question should be consulted to any authority regarding aquaculture. Table of Contents Video uh, is approximately 25 minutes and these are the following topics number one introduction to intensive culture system number two history and origin of tilapia including classifications number three natural spawning and morphology Number four, broodstock preparations and conditioning for synchronous spawning. Number five, broodstock development, three-way crossing. Number six, collections of eggs for artificial incubation. Number seven, hatchery. Number eight, hatchery artificial incubation and fry collections. Number nine, water chemistry, and other factors affecting the growth of fish or tilapia. Number 10, modular stocking of tilapia from fry, fingerling, juvenile to grow out tanks to market. Number 11, different types of peeling and feeders. Number 12, definition of circular concrete tank being a self-cleaning a tank, number 13, harvesting and grading system, 
Number 14, waste management and water exchange. Number 15, transporting produce to live market. Introduction. Intensive culture system requires relatively good, if not advanced technical know-how. Highly skilled workers, good equipments and instrumentations, and a very good financial backup to sustain a high stocking density. Keeping and growing tilapia from fry to stocker size entails a lot of responsibilities, which means an expenditure of money but also time. Through continuous innovation and research, many problems are solved in intensive culture system, but greatly affected financially those privately, privately funded commercial developments. Serious efforts towards practical and efficient tank design and understanding harnessing the available natural resources reduce the production costs. Tilapia, native to Africa and Middle East, captured and fished since, since biblical times. In Israel, they are called St. Peter fish. The ancient Egyptians bred and raised them as source of food. The capacity of tilapia to adapt to a wide range of environmental situation surpasses that practically all other species species. It is precisely this capability that has resulted in their being used as an important food source in many tropical countries where they are now farmed like carp or trout in Europe and North America. Tilapia, the second most common farm raised piece food piece in the world. The development of quality broodstock is one of the key in the success of intensive tilapia farming. Three-way crossing of different species of tilapia is usually done. The species that are most commonly reared in aquaculture are in genus Orichromis. These include the Nile tilapia, Orichromis niloticus, the Mozambique tilapia, Orichromis mozambicus, the Blue tilapia, Orichromis aureus, and Orichromis hornorum. The main objective of broodstock development is to tailor fit it to the condition of the existing water of the farm, temperature, environmental and nutritional requirements to achieve the maximum growth rate from fry to stocker size the shortest time possible. Record keeping of the length weight relationship, growth rate potential to age is a must to every farm. By religiously monitoring and recording this important data will be your barometer in the eggs production during spawning. In industrialized tilapia farming, breeders should produce uniform offspring, meaning like you are growing only one tilapia or two, which numbers in million. Male and female tilapia are meticulously inspected by the highly trained technician. The female tilapia are separated from the male and put into conditioning tank, thus triggering gonadal atresia. Being able to do synchronous spawning, production of eggs is maximized. Brood, broodstock has always maintained on high protein diet to maintain production of quality eggs, thus resulting to healthy fry. Male tilapia begins courtship display in front of the female. Only the male takes an initiative in courtship while the female plays merely a passive role. Female tilapia responded to courting. Male banded monogamous pair remain together until the fertilized eggs is picked up by the female and the male tilapia will immediately look for another female and will readily mate again. Almost all tilapia are mouth brooders where one of the parents takes up the eggs into its mouth for hatching. Cannibalism between fingerlings and fry are high among tilapia. The fingerlings will eat anything alive that is near, even fry. The female tilapia looks after the fry until they are able to swim around independently. The female tilapia will offer her mouth as a refuge whenever any danger threatens the young. The spawning pan sex ratio 
is one is to three. Tilapia eggs are collected from the mouth of the female tilapia for artificial incubation. Bear in mind that production of eggs in intensive tilapia farming is stronger than grow out of tilapia. The accurate record of spawning are very important in investigating the environmental or behavioral requirements needed for successful production of eggs may depend on being able to replicate these special circumstances that triggers spawning are multifactorial, consisting perhaps of combination of factors, such as water temperature, presence of natural food for the survival of the prey, photo period and change in water chemistry. The female tilapia where eggs are collected are transferred to conditioning tank in preparation for another spawning. Reproductive success or hatchability must be done within the age classes and on piece of similar sizes. Breeders should produce 80 to 100 percent male offspring and sex reversal should not be more than 20 percent. Tilapia hatchery. Collected tilapia eggs are immediately processed by highly trained technician for artificial incubation. Environmental changes plays a diverse part in the levels of stress belt and the acclimatization to hatchery water condition should be done gradually. Unwanted debris, scales and fingerlings are carefully separated from the eggs and fry. Continuous supply of clean water with a constant temperature between 26 and 28 degrees centigrade is maintained within the hatchery. Hatch fry are carefully separated from the, from the eggs before pouring the eggs on the incubator jar. The most common method of incubating tilapia eggs is in modified McDonald jar. The jar is a tube within a tube designed to allow circulating water to enter the bottom of the jar to keep the eggs in circular motion carrying eggs out of the jar. Newly hot swim up fry are carried out of the jar by, by the upwelling water currents. Unhats and hats eggs, eggshells, are immediately removed to prevent any contamination of water which will be the cause of disease. This to ensure the survivability of the newly hot spray. Once the fry start feeding, they are fed with high protein diet every two hours and in eating food and waste are immediately removed from the tank. Fry are moved to 30 footer circular tank where natural food is also available. They are still maintained on high protein diet. Water suitable for growing peas or tilapia is a complex soup consisting of gases, minerals, solids, and many different organisms. The combinations and proportions of these components and the resulting levels of, example, acidity, alkalinity, and hardness, salinity, and nitrogen for the type of peas you want to grow are vital for the long-term health of your tank. So managing the water chemistry of your tank involves first designing your tank from the outset with the correct basic materials and then what source of water you are going to use, the amount of water and its availability. And then monitoring water quality regularly so that you can spot and correct problems very early on. On this way, the peas or other inhabitants will not be subjected to any significant stress. It is true to say that the health of any piece is closely related to the health of its environment. The big circular tank, the water is aged and natural food are cultured. Once the fingerlings reach the 10 grams weight and the length of 1 inch, they are weighed and sampled in preparation for transfer to grow out tank. Same age and sizes should be observed, the date when it was transferred and what tank should be recorded and every two weeks the growth rate should be monitored. 
acclimatization to the water condition and tank environment should be done gradually. This is an SOP in every transfer of fish. Fish, like all animals, require a well-balanced diet, including protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, and minerals. In intensive tilapia farming, feeds especially the high protein needed for growth from priority stacker size comprises 30 to 60 percent of the total operating cost. By efficiently growing natural food that contains the much needed protein for growth will greatly reduce the expenses for manufactured fish meals, especially the high protein feeds. Dissolved oxygen, pH, ammonia and nitrites is checked daily including the water temperature of the tank on different places. Feeding of supplemental protein diet is maintained every day to assure their target date of marketable size is achieved. Continuous supply of water coming from geothermal deep well is maintained. These are some of the environmental requirements needed by tilapia to stay healthy. Hard alkaline water, 250 mg per liter, calcium carbonate, constant temperature of 26 degrees centigrade with a pH range of 8.6 to 9.2. Remember that the grow-out tank used in growing fish in aquaculture has no or little ecosystem balance. Grow-out tank controlled environment focus on dissolved oxygen, waste management, and redox ability of water to ionization. Stacker-sized tilapia are harvested and transferred to high stocking density circular tank. The stocker size are transferred to the grow out tank for marketable size tilapia. A hundred footer concrete circular tank with a high stocking density, a five horsepower value wheel is kept running 24 7. Demand feeders are used for feeding tilapia. It delivers the feeds through continuous trickles of a small amount of feeds due to the pendulum-like movement created by the water current. Circular tank used in intensive tilapia farming are self-cleaning. Plushing of the accumulated waste in the center of the tank should be done regularly. To maintain the healthiness of the water suitable for growing tilapia, only the locally grown tilapia can supply the live market and it can, it can supply the needed demand of the market to date. After all the money and time spent in growing tilapia to market size, a very efficient grading and harvesting system that minimizes stress and will not damage the scales and mucus of tilapia should be taken in serious consideration by every tilapia farm selling their produce live to the end consumers. A high stocking density level circular tank containing marketable sized tilapia is being prepared for harvesting. An original idea for harvesting and grading system I designed for circular tank exceeded the farm's expectation and proved to significantly less traumatic to tilapia harvested for market. By minimizing stress and damage the scales and mucus, you produce a high-quality tilapia, uniform in size, and consistent product that can demand a competitive price. Tilapia remain calmly in the water while smaller peers swim through the smooth surface of the grading bars and the marketable size just turn away which do not scrape the scales and the mucus. The harvesting grading process need not be unduly stressful or physically traumatizing to the workers or tilapia. By taking control of the grading process, you del deliver more peace because you can sort more tilapia with less time and labor. Do in few hours what took all day to do before. Holding tank for tilapia, ready for market. Early morning loading is done since water temperature is lower and favorable to peace. Transporting your produce to outlet can be extremely stressful. Water temperature, dissolved oxygen, and ionized ammonia, and other ways that may contaminate 
the quality of water inside your tank should be monitored. Transport tank should be always monitored along the way. Delivery of live tilapia to outlets is twice a week. You must have a very good transport system in your delivery. The storage system of live market in the United States is an aquarium. The outlet only orders the amount needed to be consumed three to four days. The total health, wholesome appearance, and survivability of tilapia inside the aquarium of the outlet where they display your produce will dictate its desirability to the end consumers. United States market was the most demanding consumers. They want a quality produce, tastier and safer piece to eat. The price they are willing to pay to ensure what they're eating is beneficial to their health and well-being. This video I created, an overview of intensive tilapia farming, is now endorsed by Google in their first window. The topic is intensive tilapia farming, all category. Uh, before I uploaded this video in YouTube uh, 2010 in my channel, April 239, and now it's gone. So now it's now there in the Desert Peaser Man. I asked the former president of American Tilapia Association, Mr. Rady Wandel, for comment that he was one who was knowledgeable people in the industry and an authority in the subject 2006 and who opined that the appropriate agency for this video distribution is the American Tilapia Association because it is beneficial to the industry. So when I... Uh, when we send this uh, video to the American Tilapia Association, uh, and, the, and there is a letter uh, that was in, included in it, September 4, 2008, and it says here, Mr. Bill Birano, President, American Tilapia Association, P.O. Box 1647, Pine Bluff, Arkansas 71613. Dear Mr. Birano, my name is Hector Kiambao. I represent Efren Maurino Tejaman. He had conducted an independent research about intensive tilapia farming in Coachella Valley, Riverside County, California, and he has spent a total of four years reading books, magazines, and internet articles, personal research <coughs> experiments, and personally documented in video and comprehensive notes the hour-to-hour -hour activities involved in intensive tilapia farming. He has done some innovative work in research and development uh, of implements for the field as well as bullstock. In particular, he was able to develop a red tilapia in collaboration with Rache Prentz, the CEO of Aqua Farming Tech. This particular innovation was achieved with the contribution of Mr. Ray Wandel, the former president of American Tilapia Association, with his contribution of some pieces stuck while doing his research and his studies regarding the Salton Sea species of tilapia. And he met Mr. Stratman, the peace and game warden, as a result of his initial contact and upon the realization that Mr. Tajaman is an independent researcher, he was requested to share some knowledge due to the fact that the private companies treat this information as proprietary as Mr. Stratman in his capacity as a peace and game warden had to go to the Philippines just to expose him to practical information. Mr. Efren Maulino Tejeman made his first video about tilapia, intensive tilapia farming in 2006. That video was about an hour long. It was shown to Mr. Ray Diwandel for comment and he was the one that is more knowledgeable. Anyway, so now, this video is the only video, in our opinion, okay, that is in existence about tilapia farming here in California. Even Rocky Prince, who is the CEO of Aqua Farming Tech, said that to be endorsed by Google meant that's a 
billion dollar that is priceless to be endorsed in that uh, uh, category. Google is the most reliable search engine right now. Okay? If I was not able to transfer it to Desert Peaceman, I lost everything. That is really um, forgivable. Come on, man. Thank you. 
Mary de Lapia became scorched this day in front of the field. Only the male takes an initiative in courtship while the female plays merely a puzzle role. Female de Lapia responded to court. Male wanted Monada Muslim remain together until the fertilized eggs is picked up by the female. And Mary de Lapia will immediately look for another female and will readily meet again. Almost all tilapia are mouth brooders, where one of the parents takes up the eggs into its mouth for hatching. Cannibalism between fingerlings and fry are high among tilapia. The fingerlings will eat anything alive that is near eating fry. The female tilapia looks after the fry until they are able to swim around independently. Female tilapia will open her mouth as a refuge whenever any danger threatens the young. The spawning fund sex ratio is one is to three. are collected from the mouth of the female tilapia for artificial incubation. Bear in mind, the production of eggs in intensive tilapia farming is stronger than grow out of tilapia. The accurate record of spawning are very important in investigating the environmental or behavioral requirements needed for successful production of eggs may depend on being able to replicate these special circumstances that trigger spawning on multifactorial, consisting perhaps of combination of factors such as water temperature, presence of natural food for the survival of the fry, water period and change in water chemistry. The female tilapia where eggs are collected are transferred to conditioning tank in preparation for another spoon. Reproductive success or hatchability must be done within age classes or in trees of similar sizes. should not be more than 20%. Tilapia Hatchet. Collected tilapia eggs are immediately processed by highly trained technician for artificial incubation. to hunter water conditions should be done gradually.
Pass fry are carefully separated from the eggs before pouring the eggs in the incubator jar.
dry of water running from your thermal heat well is maintained. These are some of the environmental requirements needed by tilapia to stay healthy. Hard alkaline water, 250 milligrams per liter calcium carbonate.
Tilapia remain calmly in the water while the smaller fish swim through the smooth surface of the drinking bars and the marketable side the stern whales do not scrape these scales for the mucus. The harvesting grading process needn't be undoubtedly stressful or physically traumatizing to the workers or tilapia. You deliver more fees because you can sort more tilapia with less time and labor. Do a few hours what took all day to do before. Holding time for tilapia ready for market. Water temperature is lower and favorable to fish. Transporting your produce to outlet can be extremely stressful. Water temperature, dissolved oxygen, and ionized ammonia, and other ways that may contaminate and affect the quality of water inside your transport tanks should be always monitored along the way. Delivery of light tilapia to outlet is twice a week. You must have a very good transport system in your delivery. The historic system of live market in the United States is an aquarium, and the outlet only orders the amount needed to be consumed three to four days. and survivability of tilapia inside the aquarium. Of the outlet where they display their produce indicates its desirability to the end consumers. The United States market has the most demanding consumer. They want the quality produce, tastier and safer fish to eat. The price they're willing to pay to ensure what they're eating is beneficial to their health and well-being.